हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल दिस इज अनदर वीडियो ऑन इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस एंड आंसर सीरीज ऑन क्लॉक मेन क्रॉसिंग इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ टॉगल सिंक्रोनाइजर व्हिच इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट क्लॉक मेन क्रॉसिंग नाउ विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम लेट अस गेट स्टार्टेड friends in our previous video we concluded that if i want to transfer a pulse from clock domain a to clock domain b irrespective of the frequency of clock domain a and clock domain b a simple multi flop synchronizer cannot be used and at the end of my previous video i asked you an question then what is the best way to transfer a pulse from clock domain a to clock domain b irrespective of the clock frequency and their phase difference and many of you answered it in the comment section and most of the people answered it correctly but in this video we will discuss those solutions in depth friends this is how people replied in the comment section they are suggesting that you can convert a pulse to level pass from one clock domain to the other and convert back from level to pulse but here they have not given any description but now in the subsequent part of the video i am going to discuss it in detail friends before proceeding further let me tell you something very important there is very well known logic that is called toggle synchronizer toggle synchronizer is useful when we want to transfer a pulse from clock domain a to clock domain b irrespective of the clock frequency of both the clock domains and their phase differences now in the subsequent video we will discuss this toggle synchronizer in detail friends on your screen you are seeing a toggle synchronizer logic design and this is clock domain a and this is clock domain b although here also i am utilizing multi flop synchronizer only but i have customized this multi flop synchronizer so that it can pass the pulse signal from clock domain a to clock domain b and in this customization i have used two xor gates one at the clock domain a side and another at the clock domain b side friends with the help of this xor gate in the clock domain a we will convert this pulse into level and then in the clock domain b with the help of this another xor gate will again convert this level into an pulse now i am going to discuss the behavior of this logic design in detail friends in the beginning just assume that output of all the flip flops is zero flip flop 1 is carrying zero at its output flip flop 2 is carrying zero flip flop 3 and flip flop 4 are also carrying zero at its output and just assume that data input is also zero so zero and this zero applied to this input of this xor gate and output will also be zero so this zero will be propagated on the positive edge of the clock and again the output of flip flop will be zero so zero will be constant at the output of flip flop 1 so zero is propagating into clock domain b so all the flops will have zero output and at the input of this xor gate in clock domain b both the inputs are zero so op will be always zero so we will carry zero throughout the chain now assume that a pulse comes on the data input and other input of this xor gate is zero so output of this xor gate will become one but it will not be transferred to flip flop 1 it has to wait the positive edge of the clock a so as soon as the positive edge on the clock a comes this xor output which is one will be transferred at the output of flip flop 1 and output of flip flop 1 will become one so this one will be immediately applied to the input of this xor gate and both the inputs will become one and output of this xor gate will go zero but this zero will not be transferred at output of this flip flop one because it has to wait the positive edge on the clock signal a but by the time this clock edge a comes this data will go zero because we are supplying only a single pulse so as soon as this data goes zero and other input is one the output of this xor gate will become one and on the positive edge of this clock a this one will be again transferred at the output of this flip flop 1 and this way output of flip flop 1 will be constant that is logic 1 so this way with the help of a pulse on the data signal we have changed the logic level at the output of flip flop 1 previously it was logic 0 and now it is logic 1 and again when the pulse will come on the data signal the output of this flip flop 1 will become logic 0 let me explain you how the output of this flip flop 1 is 1 and as soon as a pulse comes on this data signal both the inputs of this xor gate will become 1 and as per the truth table of this xor gate its output will become 0 and on the positive edge of the clock a this zero will be transferred at the output of this 
flip-flop one and Q will become zero. So immediately this zero will be applied at the input of this XOR gate. Other input is one. So output of this XOR gate will become one. But this one will not be transferred at the output of this flip-flop one because it has to wait for the positive edge on the clock A. But by the time the positive edge comes on clock A, the data will go zero because we are supplying only a single pulse. So this will become zero. Other input is also zero. Output of this XOR gate will be zero. And on the positive edge of the clock A, this zero will be again transferred at the flip-flop one output. And this will become constant zero. Friends, in a nutshell, on every pulse on this data signal, we will change the output level of flip-flop one. Now let us discuss the functionality in clock domain B side. To understand the functionality of the circuitry in clock domain B, just assume that all the flops are carrying output as zero. So flip-flop one is carrying zero, flip-flop two, flip-flop three, and flip-flop four all are carrying zero. Because both the inputs of this XOR gate are zero, output of this XOR gate is also zero. Now a pulse came on this data signal, and the output of flip-flop one will become logic one. This one will be applied to the circuitry in the clock domain B. Friends, here I will not discuss how flip-flop two will be able to solve the metastability problem because we have discussed it in detail in the previous videos. Please go through them. Here I am assuming that this one will be passed at the output of this flip-flop two, and in the next clock cycle, this one will be passed at the output of this flip-flop three. But at that time, output of this flip-flop four will be zero. So one of the input of this XOR gate goes high. So I immediately the output of this XOR gate will be one, and in the next clock cycle, output of this flip-flop four will also go high, and both the inputs are high. So output of this XOR gate will go zero. So effectively, the output of this XOR gate will remain high for only one clock cycle of clock B frequency. So friends, till the next pulse comes on this data signal, all the flip-flops will carry output as logic one. The XOR gate in the clock domain B side has both the inputs high, so output will remain zero only. Now assume that the next pulse comes on this data signal, and the output of the flip-flop one will go logic zero, and this logic zero will start propagating in the circuitry in clock domain B side. So firstly, it will appear at the output of flip-flop two, and then in the next clock cycle, it will appear at the output of flip-flop three. But by that time, the output of flip-flop four is one. So one of the input of this XOR gate is logic zero, and another input is logic one. So output of this XOR gate will become high. And in the next clock cycle, the output of this flip-flop four will also become zero. So both the inputs of this XOR gate are zero, and output goes zero. And effectively, the output of this XOR gate remains high for one clock cycle of clock frequency B. Friends, in a nutshell, we can say that whenever there is a change. In the input of this circuitry in the clock domain B, this can convert it into a pulse. Friends, I have drawn a timing diagram for you so that you can understand it better. This is clock A signal, this is clock B signal, and this is input data signal. Here I have shown only two pulses so that you can understand the functionality. So as soon as the first pulse comes, the input of this flip-flop one will toggle from zero to one. And in the next clock cycle, the output of flip-flop one will go high, which is input to flip-flop two. So I named it as FF2 underscore in, and it will remain high. Now let us see the functionality of the circuitry in clock domain B. In the timing diagram, I have shown the output of flip-flop three, output of flip-flop four, and out of this XOR gate only. As we have applied logic one to the input of this flip-flop two, this one will start propagating in this flip-flop chain. So firstly, output of flip-flop three will go high. And after one clock cycle, the output of flip-flop four will also go high. And we are putting a XOR gate at the output of flip-flop three and at the output of flip-flop four, so we will get logic one in this time span. Now, as another pulse comes on this data signal, the output of this XOR gate will go zero, and similarly, output of the flip-flop one will also go zero, which is input to flip-flop two. And similarly, it propagates into the flop chain in the clock domain B side. And we get a pulse at the output of this XOR gate. I have explained it in detail, so I don't want to spend time here now. Friends, we have discussed everything about the behavior of this toggle synchronizer in detail, but now I have a question for you here. And the question is, you have to list down the limitations of the toggle synchronizer. If you come to know the limitations of the toggle synchronizer, please write it down in the comment section, and we can discuss it there. Otherwise, I will discuss the limitations of toggle synchronizer in the upcoming video. 
And with this, I'm going to end the session and I hope that it will be quite informative for all of you. If you also like this video, please press the like button and share your feedback in the comment section. And in future also, we will come up with very interesting and informative topics. So to be aligned with our channel, don't forget to subscribe it and press the bell icon to get the notification of all the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.